Hello. Hello, hello. Sir David the Bard, coming to you from uh, Kangaroo City, down here where the grass is green and uh, the snow is brown. Anyway, anyway, um, I wanted to do um, a Sir David the Bard uh, video here. It's been uh, a while. I, I am kind of busy, you know. I do have a life. <laughs> it's not a good life, but it's a life. I want to, first of all, when I don't answer your questions, and when I don't uh, continue <coughs> to give advice, like uh, on Social Security disabilities, people will ask me like I'm some kind of an expert, and I'm not. I'm just a person who knows a, a little bit about it. <coughs> I can't answer every question. Um, I have 1.3 million hits, and uh, I try. I try, but you know, it's getting to a point <laughs> I'm getting so damn old, uh, I can't jump in there all the time and answer questions. So please don't ever feel that you're not important. Don't ever feel that you don't deserve an answer. You do deserve an answer. Um, my children deserve uh, a young father. Well, they don't have that either. Um, I felt really bad taking the kids skiing the other day and I could not get in the water uh, if you know anything about water skiing, and I don't know a lot, and I water skied a little bit when I was young, but uh, when you have to uh, do a deep water start, and you've never learned to water ski, that's a bitch. A deep water start is difficult uh, when you have never been up on a water ski, uh, you know, <laughs> two skis. Well, I used to do one ski slalom. <laughs> that was usually when the other ski fell off. I just keep going. It wasn't a regular slalom ski. But anyway, I felt bad that I wasn't young enough. Come in, come in. Oh, God. Hold on. See, I can sit here for hours and no one knocks on the door. Yes, yes. Okay, Anna Mel. I called for breakfast. Here's what I got. Allison goes, here's a ham sandwich and it's already made. <laughs> I don't want to work. <laughs> She's so cute. Anyway, um, we don't always get what we want. They don't have a young father, um, but when I was a young father, I couldn't afford $400 <laughs> to rent a boat. Well, my other kids didn't get to go skiing because I couldn't afford it. So anyway, I guess it would be rude to try to <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't occur to me. So you do a show and okay, here comes the baby. Oh, thanks to the baby. Allison, my Allison. Anyway, um, you deserve answers, and I have a little bit of an obligation. If I open up a, a subject area and then you know cut it off, and people are still interested and they want to know this or that, but I can't do it, folks. Um, <laughs> I, I hate to admit this on uh, any uh, forms. But you know what? You should not give a turbo charge car to an old man. <laughs> I hate to say it. My driving has been perfect for over a half a century. Now, <laughs> and don't tell my insurance company, <laughs> it isn't perfect even in one day. I, uh, I want to admit that um, when you're old and you've been poor and uh, you've had shit cars that uh, if they run at all you're lucky and then you give somebody like me this kind of a car when a man is using every active safety system in a car these days he probably shouldn't be driving you know, <laughs> when you, I, I'm not going to go into it, <laughs> it's too humiliating. It's, I fell asleep in traffic yesterday. <laughs> man, man, shit. <laughs> My car is so goddamn sophisticated. If, it's, if I fall asleep in traffic, it knows it. It automatically sets the brake. It automatically sets the brake on the car and goes, this guy isn't even awake. I go, how do they know that? <laughs> Cover my eyes. So I don't know. Is the camera looking at me? I don't know. But anyway, um, I, uh, I went to sleep. 
And I do have a couple of cars. I had a Dodge Charger uh, and a Corvette the other day. And, you know, when I was a kid, I couldn't even ride with those guys. I wasn't in that class. I, you know, <laughs> my DeSoto station wagon, <clears throat> it didn't have that kind of class, okay? So when the girls looked, you know, I was always eating dust and taillights. <laughs> if it was running, sometimes my damn car wouldn't even start or run. And now I come up to the uh, the red light and the big boy is through there and the cars are jumping and uh, hopping and they go, they don't know what a damn turbocharger can do to an old man's car. And uh, it's quick. I, damn, it's quick. I, I told you I drove uh, the uh, Dodge uh, 200 the other day and they said, oh, this will run away from me. And I drove it and I said, you know what? Your Dodge 200 or whatever is a piece of shit. My car will be long gone after this car is still at the uh, the red light. So anyway, uh, I know I'm rambling. I haven't taken my meds. I haven't eaten my sandwich. Everything is white because my sugars are a little bit too low. In fact, I think it's Jesus. <laughs> Can't be Jesus because he doesn't exist. Oh, Maroney. There's Maroney and his brother Maroni. Anyway, um, I just want to do a to touch base with you that, you know, I'm still living and, and I'm still seeing the uh, the silliness of human existence. Uh, my in-laws are doing very, very well and uh, they, uh, they're they just acclimating to the United States. He goes to work with me almost every day and he's always asking questions and he just really wants to learn everything. And uh, he took my kids over to register him at school the other day couldn't believe. You know, I, I, I have a little heartbreaking. I, you know, I don't like to go into these things because sometimes I can be emotional. And I don't want to be emotional. I want to be uh, intellectual all the time. But that's not a balance. Uh, they took my kids over to uh, register them in Utah. The Mormons won't pay for school. You've got to pay for school yourself. So I, it's $100 for two kids, $200. And what it goes for are the things that Mormons won't pay for. Pencils, paper, things that a school needs. <laughs> but the Mormons, no, you don't need that. We need to give our money to the stone. To the stone. We worship the stone. We love the stone. Stone people, stone people. Now, they went over and Grandma wanted to go too to see American school system. Well, Now see, it bothers me. It, and you know what? It's never not going to bother me. My wife, Mercy, I don't tell anybody, but after the rock, the garments. Anyway, Mercy said, well, uh, David, when I was in school, this bothers me. You know, I don't know why it bothers me so much. She said, uh, we couldn't buy pencils. We didn't have enough pesos. A peso is a, a cent and a half. The value of a peso is right at about a, a cent and a half. Well, what, what did you do? She said, well, I would find pencils that were totally gone and worn out. And I would use them to do my work. I was never allowed to go anywhere because we didn't have money. We had no money. Some of the other kids had more money and they got to go places and do things with the school. But um, I think she told me there were 60 in a classroom. 60 kids in a classroom with one teacher. No pencils. She had to borrow paper from her friends or buy it or do work for her paper. So grandpa and grandma go over and write a hundred dollar check, it's not 4,000 pesos, and uh, 
write another check over at the high school for uh, Abigail to go over to the high school. You know, when I see people that come to this country that think that using a pencil this size and putting it away neatly every night, and by God, if you lost it, you were shit city. You don't lose pencils in the Philippines. When I see an immigrant like Mercy come here, didn't speak very good English, never wrote a check in her life, had no idea how to, uh, what an economy was in an, another country, didn't really have any uh, s uh, skills, because in the Philippines, if a woman is over 30, you can't be hired. Those sexy young girls in the Philippines can work from whatever, 16 to 30. After that, if you're a woman, you're discarded like a paper cup, and you can't work. For her to come to this country and uh, be given a chance, and now she's been at the same uh, employment for eight years, and uh, she has stocks, bonds, uh, she has a 401, uh, she has her own uh, home that uh, is almost paid for. 14 more years and her home will be paid for. She makes good money. The uh, stores that she works for think she walks on water. She has three new cars right now. Car payments, you know, we pay more in car payments than most people pay for a mortgage. She's refinanced her house down at 2.98% 14-year loan. Pays her taxes, obeys the law, drives well, doesn't have tickets, doesn't endanger the public. When we can get new people into this country who want to work that hard and that long and to make something of themselves, that makes me proud. That makes me proud. And when I think of the little pencil where she came from, the little pencil, and now <laughs> I, I do her taxes, <laughs> and I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at hiding legally, and I mean legally. We don't cheat on our taxes. Why? Why? When I can legally hide the amount of taxable income, I'm just shocked. I'm shocked that this little girl has done as well as she's done. Now, not all the Filipinos do that. She has friends. Uh, most of them don't have a house. Most of them don't have a new car, and um, most of them can't do the things that uh, Mercy and her lifestyle allow her to do. I've got a 17-year-old girl, Abigail, who's been driving now in a courier business for a year. She's paid for all of her own insurance. She's paid for all of her own gas. She pays for her driver's license, and she paid for a ticket. She got a ticket. She had to pay her ticket, and she hit a curb with a $500 rim on her car. And I said, fix it. No. You deserve to be punished? Buy a new rim. She did. $500. Windshield. Broke. She had to pay for that. Never been late. Never made a mistake on her route. And she is one of the prize employees of this company. Anytime this company has new routes or new things they want done, she, Abigail, is always considered to be up at number one uh, to make decisions. And uh, she, she goes to school. She's in 11th grade. She's in 11th grade, the damn richest 11th grader I've ever seen. <laughs> if I want two to $5,000 quickie loan, I go to Abigail. Now, I know I'm not your real dad, and I know you're not my real daughter, but I need three grand. Oh, okay, Dad. And, and, and she's a wonderful child. Little Allison is on the... Uh, student council over at the junior, at the uh, grade school. She went over and registered. She says, Dad, I can't be on the uh, student council over here. And I said, why? She says, I don't have 
I said, you can't be on the student council and, uh, unless you pay 150 She said, that's right. Well, there's the Mormons. They're going to pay uh, for rocks, talking rocks, but they're not going to help you become uh, a, um, a student council representative. So anyway, I just got into rattle today a little bit about some of the things that are still going on uh, in my life, the kids and, and the in-laws and... Uh, it's been perfect so far. You live with your in-laws. Let me tell you, it ain't perfect. I've never heard anybody say it's perfect. So far, not a word. Grandma has been wonderful. Tremendous sense of humor. She's always cleaning and sewing and, and taking care of Allison. Allison needs some uh, parental supervision. And, uh, and uh, Ty, the father, just a wonderful man wonderful man. He, you know, is a hu human being that should have never been trapped in the Philippines. So anyway, um, I just wanted to, to close this video with the, with the rock. Uh, I, I'm still so much in shock with the rock. When the people uh, in the, uh, Idaho pulled me off the boat, the Coast Guard, the three of them were Mormons. And uh, I told, I said to them, I said, aren't you a little embarrassed? Come on. You gotta be a little embarrassed worshiping the rock. A talking rock in a top hat. It sounds like pulling a bunny. It sounds like a magic show, doesn't it? Well, we don't talk about it. <laughs> I can see why. I wouldn't talk about it. If I had a clown laughing out of my ass, I, I wouldn't pull my pants down either. So anyway, uh, I want you to make sure that you all, uh, you know, have health and navel, marrow and bones and uh, that you know how the bard is confused now all the time. <laughs> Dementia has overtaken the bard, okay. The, the Pele Ale got here, the words of my mouth, three times. That's magic. Magic shit that The Rock told Joseph Smith and Moroni, which nobody's ever seen, the gold place Moroni. That no one has seen anything. They just go, well, you know, here's a magic rock. And I've been looking for a magic rock that will talk, and uh, I have a couple of them. And uh, I'm going to show them to you. Yes, the bard has uh, a seer stone. Uh, it used to be called a kidney stone, <laughs> but it's a seer stone now. And I want you to have health and enable me on the bones. Right there, when he's saying, "You power and creature be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity." Rock me, rock, <laughs> rock me, rock. <laughs> this bard's gone. <laughs>